A lot of you come to this channel to learn about not only the what, but also the why in all things fitness. So after sharing my recent video on how to take creatine, a lot of you rightfully asked, wait, why exactly should we take a higher dose? Well, today we're gonna go a bit more in depth on just that. In my creatine video, I said that taking the common dose of 3 to 5 grams a day might not be enough. I then recommended taking 0.1 grams of creatine per kilogram of body weight per day instead. Of course, the big question is, why take this dose that's higher or even double the previous amount? Is it possible that I'm being paid off by big creatine to say this? Well, if I am, then I must have given them the wrong routing number because my bank account is still mad at me. But to answer this, let's first understand understand a bit more about how we got here. The main benefit of taking creatine is to improve exercise capacity by rapidly producing energy through ATP resynthesis during short high intensity activities like lifting weights. And early researchers that established much of our knowledge on creatine today discovered that improving ATP resynthesis requires taking enough creatine to achieve and maintain a certain increase of creatine saturation. In other words, you have to hit a certain level of increase before it really starts working. Just like how you have to deadlift three times your body weight before you feel worthy of recording yourself. More specifically, we have to increase muscle total creatine concentrations around or above 20 millimoles per kilogram of dry muscle weight, which is about a 14 to 20% increase for most people. And the early researchers concluded that taking the common three to five grams a day is best for achieving this. But if recent research is anything to go by, like the two meta-analysis in 2021 and 2024 that showed even greater strength gains with higher dosages, then perhaps 3 to 5 grams is not enough for everyone. Now, full transparency, we don't currently know exactly why that is. But some researchers did suggest potential reasons that make a lot of sense. One has to do with muscle fiber composition. Because creatine primarily benefits high-intensity activities, creatine is both stored and used in greater capacities in type 2 fat fast twitch muscle fibers. So for people with proportionally greater type 2 muscle fiber counts compared to type 1, like elites, powerlifters, and sprinters, their creatine demands are naturally higher, thus likely benefit from supplementing more creatine. Now most of these studies using higher dosages found the greatest improvements occurred with lower body exercises like squats and leg presses. Exercises that engage some of our largest type 2 muscle fibers in our bodies. So it's possible that 3 to 5 grams a day is enough for enhancing certain smaller groups, but we might need more for larger muscles. Also, just having more muscle in general likely increases creatine demand, which is why it makes a bit more sense to base your creatine intake on your body weight. Now, another potential explanation has to do with actually achieving creatine saturation. You see, everybody absorbs creatine differently. Unfortunately, some people absorb very little and can never reach the required saturation levels, thus see little to no benefits. These people are known as creatine non-responders. Now, we still don't fully understand why non-responders exist. Some scientists believe it has to do with baseline creatine levels, some tie it back to muscle fibers, and some do research even link it to genetic limitations. But what if some of these non-responders are simply not actual non-responders, but just underdosed? To understand this a bit better, let's revisit the early research that established 3 to 5 grams being sufficient. As we know, we take creatine to improve improve our workouts in order to increase overall strength and muscle gains. So you would think the research we base our creatine dose on definitely included some form of training relevant to improving muscle and strength. However, probably because it wasn't exactly on the radar at the time, the early research employed no training whatsoever. In fact, many of the subjects were actually sedentary, so their creatine demands do not exactly align with our demands today. Now, of course, we also have more modern research that do employ more relevant training methods, but with the established importance of reaching that 20 millimole creatine saturation, you would think that these studies also diligently ensured that sufficient saturation was reached. Unfortunately, not many actually bothered measuring concentrations. And hey, measuring creatine levels isn't exactly easy or cheap, so it's understandable. But it means we cannot confirm saturation was reached for the far majority of these studies. And for the studies that did measure 
temperature concentrations, some clearly show that the 20 millimole threshold was not reached, or at the very least, not fully maintained throughout the study. Of course, as we know, the majority of these studies do show that 3 to 5 grams can lead to greater gains, but the lack of confirming saturation leaves us wondering whether even greater gains can be achieved with higher doses. Also, even though these lower dose studies did include resistance training, some were super basic programs with no progressive overload, which means they didn't even take full advantage of the main benefit of creatine. But if they did have more demanding training, I think it's logical to assume their creatine demands would have changed. And that's about the full picture we currently have on why higher dosages might be better. Overall, the current body of literature still has a lot of unanswered questions. But if future studies continue to show a benefit with higher dosages, then maybe we'll get a clearer answer. So for now, we can look at things like fiber composition, muscle size, absorption rates, and training to support the potential need for more creatine. But ultimately, whether you decide to change up your dose is up to you. Either way, I hope this video helped clarify things if any new information comes out, rest assured, I'll let you know right away. If you enjoyed this video, then please give it a saturated thumbs up and share it with your creatine loving friends. Subscribe for more and let me know what you think in the comments. As always, thank you for watching and don't forget to get your protein.